What to expect when you're suing or getting sued? A presentation by Bob Benji and Benji Law Corporation. Disclaimers. This presentation is not intended as legal advice and is not intended to establish any attorney-client relationship. Rather, this is merely intended as an educational general overview of the subject matter. Scope of this presentation. For purposes of brevity, this presentation is intended as an educational primer for new litigants, both plaintiffs and defendants, so as to have a better understanding of what the litigation process entails, a sort of what to expect when you're suing or getting sued. This presentation is geared towards civil lawsuits only. It does not apply to criminal actions which operate under a very different set of rules. Lawsuits happen, especially in California. First off, if you're being sued, you're not alone. Lawsuits are very common, particularly in litigious states such as California. If you get served with a summons and complaint, it's natural to get upset, but please don't panic. Stay calm, and within 24 to 48 hours of service, contact a litigation attorney with experience in the area of law at issue. If you need to find an attorney, you can either ask trusted friends or advisors, including CPAs, for a referral, or search online at websites such as avo.com. Select your attorney carefully. This may be the best piece of advice. Lawsuits are time consuming and rarely resolved in short order. They may drag on for months or even years. Also, the stakes are high. The parties in a lawsuit often have a lot riding on the outcome of the case, which may result in a substantial money judgment award. Therefore, it is imperative to take care and invest time into selecting the attorney or law firm that will re represent you in any litigation. This is not the time for corner cutting or shopping around for a bargain. You need to strike a balance between expense on the one hand and quality and experience on the other. It is also important that you can communicate well with your attorney and that you can see yourself working well with her or him over a long period of time. Discussions with potential attorneys. Before you commence discussing the details of your case with any potential attorney, first, make sure to list out the names of all plaintiffs, defendants, or potential third parties that may get dragged into the case for the attorney. Ask the attorney to first confirm that no conflicts of interest exist. Only proceed if the attorney affirmatively and unequivocally confirms that no such conflict of interest exists. Assuming no conflict, Discussions you have with even a potential attorney, even if you ultimately do not retain this person. Those discussions are protected from disclosure by the attorney-client privilege. So speak freely, openly, and honestly. Changing your attorney later in the case is not an ideal situation. While you are certainly able to fire your attorney, and your attorney is also able to fire you in the middle of a pending action. That is not an ideal situation. It causes disruption in the pace of the prosecution or defense of your case and often gives rise to delays and added expense since your new lawyer will need to get up to speed with the case as she or he enters an existing war. You want to avoid a situation where you need to pay a new lawyer to get up to speed. As a plaintiff, you also want to avoid the need for a trial continuance to give a new lawyer time to wait in. Please click the like and subscribe button for this video. That is the bell icon and the thumbs up icon. This helps the YouTube algorithm provide wider distribution of the video to other folks that may be interested in the subject matter. We thank you in advance. Don't waste time after getting served. Once you've been served with court papers, you are on a clock and have a limited amount of time, typically 30 days, depending on the manner of service. 
to file and serve a responsive pleading in the lawsuit, that is to make an appearance in the action. If you fail to timely make an appearance, the plaintiff may take your default, which will bar you for, from putting on a defense. You don't want to jam up your newly retained defense attorney by waiting and seeing or trying to call the plaintiff and work it out yourself. That delay may prove costly and if taken too far, could make your case less attractive for a lawyer to take. So how long does litigation take? Litigation, particularly in California's very busy judicial system, can take 12 to 24 or more months from the time of the filing of the case until entry of judgment. In arbitration matters, which operate outside of the formal court system, that time may be a little bit more abbreviated. That said, many cases resolve on a shorter timeline by way of settlement without the need for trial or an arbitration hearing. In fact, the vast majority of cases never go to trial or hearing. So what are the stages of litigation? Here are some general stages of litigation. First, there is the filing of the action and service of the complaint or the arbitration demand. Then comes the discovery phase, usually written discovery first, followed by oral depositions. Then there is the preparation phase for trial or arbitration hearing, including expert witness depositions. And then comes the trial or arbitration hearing, which feature live witnesses and presentation of evidence to the trier of fact, whether that be a judge, jury, or arbitrator. Then comes a post-trial phase, including money judgment enforcement efforts, which may take years over and above the previously indicated timeline. Yes, you read that right. Some cases may even give rise to additional separate lawsuits, such as where a losing defendant is later determined to have scrolled away assets to avoid paying on a judgment. When is settlement most likely? Settlement is most likely to occur either in the discovery phase or the trial preparation phase, which for purposes of this discussion is defined as the last 90 to 100 days before the trial actually takes place. Many cases settle on the eve of trial. Some settle after trial has already commenced but before judgment has been entered. What factors increase the likelihood of settlement? Here's a non-exhaustive list of factors. The quality, experience, and temperament of the lawyers on both sides. The quality of the witnesses, both lay witnesses and expert witnesses. The evidence of liability or in support of a solid defense. The risk of an attorney's fee award. The cost and expense. The more the various parties spend, the more likely they are to get fatigued and wish to end the war. The intensity of the aggravation of the case, for example, aggressive discovery efforts and the risk of sanctions on discovery dispute motions. Again, that is a non-exhaustive list, but it's a good start. So what should you do after a case is commenced, or even before for that matter? First things first, get prepared. Whether you're a plaintiff or a defendant, preparation is more than half the battle. A prepared organized and cooperative client is extremely attractive to a good lawyer. Preparation includes getting your facts straight, including the nuances and the details. Marshalling the relevant documents to support a claim or defense so you're not having to hunt for them later in the fog of battle. Getting organized. Accurately labeled folders, whether physical or digital, with notes, images, documents, and files, will be incredibly helpful to your case and will or should ultimately save you money in legal fees. Lack of preparation and lack of cooperation will hurt you. Lawyers are generally incredibly busy and are often juggling multiple cases at any given time. They appreciate and value clients who understand that the attorney-client relationship is somewhat of a quote-unquote partnership, although not in the legal sense. When the client is prepared, organized, and cooperative, the client is not only more attractive to a good lawyer, 
she is likely to save money because the lawyer won't be forced to wade through tons of irrelevant documents to get to, get to the real facts. Clients who wish to dump a case on the attorney and clean their hands of the whole thing or not be bothered with it will often either damage the relationship or give rise to higher fees in the form of wasted time for the lawyer. Always be 100% truthful with your lawyer. No case is perfect. All cases have some form of hair on them, and that is perfectly fine and okay. It is infinitely better for you to have full disclosure and transparency with your lawyer than to try to hide bad facts and hope that no one figures it out. It's your opponent's attorney's job to dig up bad facts and rest assured that in nearly every case, that attorney will eventually do so. If you disclose bad facts to your own attorney, your lawyer can help deal with the situation preemptively rather than reacting to it in the fog of battle. Honestly with your, honesty with your lawyer will also give rise to a better working relationship and trust. Be cooperative in the discovery process. No one likes discovery, including your lawyer. It is mind-numbing, stressful, and sometimes described as a torture device. No one wants to look through thousands of emails, text messages, or documents. But litigants have a statutory duty to cooperate with legitimate discovery requests made by their adversaries. This is just an unpleasant fact of litigation. So, cooperate fully, oft, often, and in a timely fashion with your lawyer to answer discovery questions and produce requested records. Avoid falling into the trap where you instruct your lawyer to play discovery games against your adversary. That will often turn into a bigger problem, a costly discovery motion battle. Remain patient. The litigation process is slow, often unpleasant or painful, and nothing like what you've seen in movies or on television. Dramatic moments are rare. Understand that your attorney is probably doing the best he or she can within the constraints of the system. Harassing or continuously email bombing your attorney or otherwise trying to intimidate him or her to make things happen faster will only cause resentment and discontent in the relationship, which is ultimately a disservice to you, the client. Always remain understanding, patient, cordial, and cooperative. Remember to discuss insurance coverage with your attorney. Some, not all, but some defense cases allow for a claim against your liability, homeowners, title, or other insurance policy. Make sure to communicate to your attorney any and all insurance policies that may exist. That is, of course, your attorney's job to inquire of you, but you can help by furnishing copies of your insurance policy declaration pages and or the policies themselves to your lawyer early in the case. In appropriate cases, your lawyer should tender a written claim for defense and indemnity to the insurers. If successful, the insurers may be required to pay for some of your attorney fees in defending against the claim. Reminder to like and subscribe. If you got some real value from this video and have not already clicked the like and subscribe icons, please consider doing it now. We greatly value and appreciate your support and thank you in advance. Avoid discussing your case with others. The only person you can comfortably and in full candor discuss your case with is your lawyer and his or her colleagues at the firm, including partners, associates, paralegals, etc. Those discussions are protected from disclosure to third parties by the attorney-client privilege. That means no one can force the attorney or his or her associates or paralegals to dis disclose what was told to them. If you discuss your case with anyone else, that other person could theoretically get called into the case as a witness to testify against you as to what was said. If you disclose discussions you have had with your attorney to third parties, you may inadvertently waive the precious attorney-client privilege which can have detrimental consequences to the future of your case. Always assume your adversary, adversary is watching you. That may sound a little bit scary, but it's true. In certain cases, particularly where you 
a plaintiff in a personal injury matter, you must assume that your adversary has hired a private investigator to keep tabs on you and collect evidence undermining your claims. This could include video recording of you while you exercise or lift heavy objects, which footage could later be presented as evidence to undermine your claim of injury. This could also include investigators speaking to third-party witnesses about you to collect detrimental evidence. Call Benji Law Corporation for a free consultation. We offer a free one-hour legal consultation with an experienced attorney. This can be done either in person at our office in Beverly Hills, California, remotely via Zoom or FaceTime, or telephonically. The consultation is free of any obligation and completely confidential and protected from disclosure to third parties by the attorney-client privilege, even if Benji Law Corporation or Bob Benji are not ultimately retained as your legal counsel. To make an appointment, please call us at 310 area code 203-2650 or email us at info at benjilaw.com. That's I-N-F-O at B E N J. Why like yellow, law.com. This concludes this video. We hope you found it informative and useful. Thanks for watching.